Hello, everyone. I am delighted to be here. And yes, I'm going to be talking about our freshwater future. We have a lot of discussions about our freshwater future these days. And why is that? It's because we're facing a serious challenge. How to meet the freshwater needs of the 7 billion people on this planet, while also addressing the needs of the natural ecosystems, also dependent upon fresh water. So where is the fresh water on our planet? We can see the fresh water that's stored in our lakes, reservoirs, and rivers. What we can't see is the fresh water that's stored underground, as groundwater, in the openings, in the rocks and sediments, hundreds of meters below the surface. Yes, the tree is not to scale. <laughs> in regions referred to as aquifers. So this groundwater that's hidden from view is an important part of our freshwater supply. 44% of the freshwater used in the United States is groundwater. In California, that number is 30%. But that's in a typical year. What about in a drought year? That number doubles. 60% of our water comes from groundwater. So in a drought year, when we see the water levels in the reservoirs going down, we're not going to have the surface water we need, so we turn to the water that's being stored or saved underground. I often refer to groundwater as our freshwater savings account. Well, if groundwater plays such a critical part in our freshwater supply and in our freshwater future, then it's essential that we have effective means of managing and protecting our groundwater. So how do we do that? Because our groundwater is not easy to reach. It's buried underground, hidden underground. Well, the traditional way of monitoring what's happening with our groundwater is to figure out where we are in terms of quantity and quality. And those are the two most important things we really need to be monitoring. How much water is down there, and what's the quality of the water that's down there? Do we have a good supply, good quality fresh water for drinking and for irrigation? And how do we usually get that? Well, traditionally, we get that information by drilling wells. Wells give us very useful information, but wells only sample one location, and you can drill another well, and you can drill another well, but you never get the spatial density of sampling that you really need to effectively manage our large aquifers. So what do we do? Well, I often compare this problem to the problem doctors faced at the start of the 20th century. They used to have their form of drilling. It was called exploratory surgery. Well, we don't hear about exploratory surgery so much anymore. Who went in for exploratory surgery? Well, you wouldn't. First, you would want imaging. Medical imaging has revolutionized the approach to human health. My passion, what I believe, is that Earth imaging can revolutionize our approach to our freshwater future. So what's Earth imaging? Well, we can't exactly do this. <laughs> but... We have amazing technology. We have geophysical imaging methods, which many of you haven't heard about. We can deploy sensors on the ground surface, in helicopters, in satellites, and use various forms of energy to image Earth, to get information about the groundwater hundreds of meters below our feet. So today I'm going to be talking about two projects I've been involved with, one monitoring quantity, one monitoring quality. And what we're doing through these projects is advancing Earth imaging so that it becomes an integral part of facing our freshwater future. So the first project, the Water Quantity Project, is groundwater management in the San Luis Valley in Colorado. We worked in the area just north of the Colorado-New Mexico border. Now, one of the best things about science is the people you get to work with. And I've worked with some amazing people. The team of people on this project, Jessica, Jingyi, and Howard at Stanford. And we had a partner, Willem, a hydrologist working in the San Luis Valley. And this was an incredible opportunity, having this collaboration. We can take the research we're doing at Stanford and actually take it out there and work with a real person in a real place with a real problem and demonstrate that what we're doing here at Stanford truly has applications to groundwater management. So the San Luis Valley is a high-altitude valley, desert climate, but you see irrigation, or you see agriculture, which means we have irrigation. The agriculture in the San Luis Valley is completely dependent upon groundwater for irrigation. Pumping from about 100 meters below the surface, a region referred to as the confined aquifer. 
And agriculture, long-term viability of agriculture in this region is completely dependent upon ensuring we always have a good supply of groundwater. So what's needed is to monitor water quantity in this aquifer. And ideally, what they'd like to be doing is making measurements over the entire San Luis Valley, 3,500 square miles, about once a month, about every 100 meters. The measurement they make is the measurement to which the water level rises in a well. It's referred to as head. So they want these head measurements all over the San Luis Valley. Well, can you imagine doing that drilling wells? Never. Think of how many wells you're going to have to drill. So what we did was to explore an earth imaging method that took advantage of a well-known phenomenon. The relationship between what's happening with the water levels down in your aquifer and what's happening at the ground surface. So very simply, when we pump water, what's going to happen to the water level in my well? It's going to go down. And in the San Luis Valley, during the summer months when we're pumping, it goes down on the order of meters. And I'm pulling water out down here. What's going to happen at the surface? It's going to go down. We get subsidence on the ground surface on the order of millimeters to centimeters. During the winter months, when we have rain and then the melting of the snowpack that recharges the aquifer, brings water back in, what happens to my head? What happens to my water level in my well? It goes up. And what happens on the ground surface? On the ground surface, we get uplift, again, on the order of millimeters to centimeters. So what we wanted to do was to find an earth imaging method that could allow us to monitor this on the ground surface as a way of mapping out over the entire San Luis Valley what is happening 100 meters below the surface in the groundwater aquifer. Well, there is an earth imaging method that can do this. It's called INSAR, Interferometric Synthetic Aperture Radar a satellite method that has covered the globe once a month since 1992, making measurements with spatial resolution on the order of tens to hundreds of meters, measuring this deformation of the ground surface. And the most amazing fact that I've saved to last, the accuracy, millimeter to centimeter. This is unbelievable. From a satellite, we can be getting that subtle movement of the ground surface on the order of millimeters to centimeters. So we decided we wanted to do this in the San Luis Valley. Here's the data coverage we had. Good coverage over the San Luis Valley. But there's a reason no one had been crazy enough to try this before in an agricultural area. What happens in an agricultural area, I know some of you are already thinking, we're trying to detect the ground surface doing this. Meanwhile, you've got your crops growing like this. So it's a real challenge to tease out the signal. And when we first looked at the data from the San Luis Valley, here is an image showing the data quality. This was Jessica Reeves' start to her PhD thesis. Blue is bad, not a great start. <laughs> it's an agricultural area. Yes, the problem we thought we would have, we had. But zoom in. You start to see this regular pattern, these regions where we have higher quality data. Can anyone think what these regular patterns are? Well, this was amazing. When you overlay a Google Earth image, what do you see? It's the gaps between the irrigated circles in the center pivot irrigation system. So these gaps in the fields where no crops were growing, we could use INSAR to see through the crops and down and sense what's happening in our groundwater. So if I was in charge of the world, I would tell every farmer they need to leave gaps in their fields so that we can see beneath and figure out what's going on. I'm not in charge of the world. So. Using these data and utilizing and developing advanced processing methods, what were we able to do? Achieve success in an agricultural area. So what you're looking at are head measurements, water levels measured in wells, those are the blue dots, from 1998 to 2011. And the red dots are what we were able to do with our INSAR data. With this satellite, we were able to track the well measurements. Outstanding agreement. So what does this allow you to do? It allows us to use INSAR to fill in gaps in time. You see there's regions in the time sampling that we can fill in. We can also go back in time. There was no well here in 1992. You can't send a hydrologist back in time to drill a well and make some measurements, but INSAR provides that time record for us that helps us better understand and better model our groundwater system in the San Luis Valley. So we can go back in time and going forward, 
We can use INSAR now to monitor what's happening in our groundwater act. We can use this earth imaging method to monitor what's happening 100 meters down in this aquifer. We can also use INSAR to fill in gaps in space. We now have INSAR images covering the entire San Luis Valley. And this is just showing the summer months, an example of the subsidence due to summer pumping, over 3,500 square miles. And what we're seeing here is the subtle depression, 10 centimeters in the summer. Now, part of the reason for monitoring this, the subsidence, going down when we pump, going up when we recharge, down when we pump, in the San Luis Valley, it's actually a good news story. It goes down in the summer, but it recovers in the winter. There are other places, and you might be able to guess where, California Central Valley, where the pumping is such that when we look at the INSAR images, the subsidence, it's going down, 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 down. We're not recovering through recharge in the winter months. Subsidence going down, down, down is bad, not only because it's telling us we're depleting the quantity of groundwater, it's bad because of the impact on our surface infrastructure. Our bridges, our roads, our aqueducts that carry our water are being impacted by the subsidence. So we are excited at the thought now of using INSAR worldwide to monitor water quantity in agricultural areas. The next example is a water quality example. Remember my seven billion people? Well, 50% of them, many of you in this room, have elected to live within 60 kilometers of the coastline. So what's the water quality problem? It means that all over the world, we have people living in coastal areas pumping water from groundwater aquifers and pumping so much that they're starting to draw in salt water. So we took on a project working very close to home, the coastline of Monterey Bay, to develop an earth imaging method that could be used to monitor the change in water quality in a coastal area. Again, I got to work with a great team of people. This was a collaboration with Adam Pidlasecki at the University of Calgary, Meredith, Tara, and Brad, the rest of the team. Saltwater intrusion along the Monterey coast. Very simply, what's happening here, water's being pumped from two levels. And there's been so much water pumped that salt water is now moving into the wells. Once you're pumping salt water in your well, you're done with that well. You can't drink salt water. You can't use salt water to irrigate your crops. So essential in this area is groundwater management to try and stop this happening. And critical first step in groundwater management, where is this salt water interface? Where is the fresh water? Where is the salt water? The approach that's been taken is to use well data. And there were four sentinel wells drilled along the southern stretch of the Monterey coast. Sentinel being on the lookout for salt water. These wells are there, and they're monitoring the salt water by measuring electrical resistivity. As the salinity goes up, your electrical resistivity goes down. So if you measure electrical resistivity, you can detect incoming salt water and determine when it's reached your wells. Well, you remember this picture? My problem with wells, you only get information at a few locations. So what did we decide to use? Not sentinel wells, sentinel geophysics. Imaging, not electrical resistivity measurements in a well, but electrical resistivity along the entire coast to get images of what was happening beneath our feet. What we did was to put electrodes all along the beach. We had ended up working along a 40-kilometer stretch of the beach, making hundreds of thousands of electrical resistivity measurements. And what I'm going to show you are the results from the pilot study. So you're out in Monterey Bay looking at the coast, what I'm going to show you is an image in that yellow section, a slice looking down beneath the beach. Here is our sentinel geophysics. This, in case you don't realize it, is amazing. We are imaging salt water to a depth of 150 meters. We're imaging down 150 meters. This is going from south to north, and what we're mapping out, red is low electrical resistivity, so salt water. Blue is high electrical resistivity, so fresh water. So we're seeing this complex pattern of where we have fresh water, where we have salt water. We're getting excellent agreement with the wells. Remember those four wells? The color scheme is the same. Where they get red, we get red. Where they get green, we get green. So we're matching these detailed measurements in a well, but we are getting so much more. We are getting a complete image that captures the complex spatial distribution of salt water. In the south here, you see fresh water punching out to the bay. 
in the north, you see salt water moving down from the top aquifer into the underlying aquifer. We are just capturing such incredible detail in this image. Coming soon, so stay posted, not today, but coming soon, we acquired data along a 40-kilometer stretch. And because we had a longer stretch along which to lay out our electrodes, we are seeing 350 meters deep, 1,000 feet down, mapping out where there's salt water, where there's fresh water. This is essential information that's going to be so useful for proactive groundwater management in this area. So we have this earth imaging method that we feel can be and should be used worldwide to monitor the change in water quality in our coastal aquifers. So I'm going to leave you today with uh, our freshwater future. And as you leave here discussing our freshwater future, I hope you'll also be discussing earth imaging in the same way that medical imaging has revolutionized our approach to human health. I am convinced that earth imaging can revolutionize our approach to our freshwater future. Thank you.